We discuss about learning. We have the basic Migdash immediately. And for a full shleim of four, Chiyom Nassim ben Sara, and Aaron David Halevi ben Menucha de Lester, and Sara Basara, Jimmy's mother. Okay, we're we're holding right on the top of Lamed Aleph, Lamed Aleph, 31, 31a. Some of this Gemara is famous, let's see. Tanya, we have a Brysa. It's taught in a Brysa, you see this page is interesting, there's Rashi on both sides, and if you notice that, and that sort of like sticks out. Um, the Brysa says, Rabbi Yehuda Imer Mishim Rabbi Akiva. Rabbi Yehuda says the name of his teacher, Rabbi Akiva. Rabbi Yehuda is Rabbi Yehuda Rabbi Lai. Um, yeah, he, he's, he's very, very common in the Mishnayas. And um, he would be the author of the Sifra. Sifra is the Medrash on the Yikra. Oh, my charts, yeah. Yeah, and the reason why I'm pointing this out is because soon we're going to have Rabbi Nehemia, who also says he's going to ask on Rabbi Akiva. So you would have that's Rabbi Akiva, that's Rabbi Huda, Rabbi Huda, Rabbi Loi, and Rabbi Nehemia is coming up. So anyway, okay. Barisha in Maho Yaimrim. We're talking about the song of the day in the Beis Hamikdash. What would they say on Sunday? Say La Hashem Aretzim Loya. What is that? Psalm 24, right? Mm -hmm. To Hashem is the earth and all that fills it. Uh, we had it in Tamid, at the end of Tamid. Oh, right. <laughs> yeah, we may have had it in other places also. Al yes. Shame, why do we say that on Sunday? Because on Sunday, Al Shame Shekana Vihikna Vishal Bailami. Hashem sounds like acquired the world, he gave over the world to those that dwell in it. And he rules the world. He rules the world independently of the angels because they weren't created yet. What would they say on Monday? Great is Hashem and he's very praised. It says, right? Um, why is that on Monday? Because Hashem divided between the upper and the lower. And he sits in the upper. Yeah, as if he's in his city. That's what it means. He's, he dwells there, the early Cano in his city, as it, in, in, the, in the heavens. What's the Aleph? Aleph is. He adds some words in. Okay. Rashi, I think, has those words. I'm not sure if that's. In the text, or that's a commentary. What do, you, what do they sing on Tuesday? Shem sits in the upper. Shem sits with the congregation. Shem sits with the congregation. This is because on the third day, he raised the uh, dry land over the waters, a place to dwell. What do you say on Wednesday? The vengeful God. Why is that? Because Hashem created the sun and the moon. And Hashem's going to take revenge from those that worship them. Yeah. What do we have in the Parsha? Uh, we had um, Leah offers uh, Zilpa to Yaakov. And then she's all upset that Yaakov, uh, Bagad, she names the child Bagad like, uh, like Yaakov was, uh, was um, um, rebellious. It's a, a traitor. Uh, why? But she offered. He says, yeah, but he should have rejected it. <laughs> he should have, uh, right? That's what it says. So um, she was offering, she was being nice, but Yaakov should have. Anyway, Hashem creates the sun and the moon. And then he takes revenge from those people that worship him. So that's the Kelnikam Hashem. Okay. Which is acceptable. 
Bechamishi Hayoyim, on the fifth day, what do we say? And this is how we got into this, because the fifth day was Hanina Lelekimuzeinu. We sing the Hashem, our, our strength. Al Shem Shabara Oifes Vidogim, Shabiach Lashme. Listen to this. Why is this? Because on that day, Hashem created the uh, fish and the birds that cause us to praise Him. Rashi says, when a person sees interesting birds, so then he praises Hashem. Yeah. What are we going to do when we retire? <laughs> Go bird watching. <laughs> What's the idea of bird? Well, it's to praise Hashem. <laughs> fish yeah how are we going to go fish watching so um shells. the shells we'll pick up the shells <laughs> uh-huh. we walk along the sand oh uh, and you go fishing okay what's it called there's an aquarium what's it called the birds the in the in the zoo in the anonymous they have a place where they keep the birds aviary very good yeah the aviary so that is very good. Um, <laughs> that's on the fifth day. No, no. Remember that um, on the fifth day, we that that was the same song that we sang for the Musa for Rosh Hashanah, and that's how we got into this because Musa for Rosh Hashanah was Anina Um And how did that come up? Because um, it says Hariyol Elikeyaku. Because it says Hariu. Okay. Hashem Malach Geos Lavish. Hashem is king and he wears um, uh, Geos, which means like pride. Hashem Shagamar Malach Malach Alem, because he finished his work and he rules over everything. On the seventh day, we say the song of Shabbos to the day which is all Shabbos. What is that talking about in the future? And it's going to be a world of just Shabbos. Yeah. Everything is going to stop. Rashi says that the world is going to be destroyed. There'll be no people. Everything will stop. It doesn't sound like what I was imagining. I thought it was going to be, we'll stop from work, not no people. But anyway, the Gemara is going to say this. I'm Rab Nechemia. Rab Nechemia says, now the base here, I, I, I would have, without this, I would have understood that he was arguing with Rabbi Yehuda, without what the Bach, the Bach is adding in a few words over here. I would have understood that Rabbi Nehemia is a student of Rabbi Akiva as well. He's the author of the Tisefta. Stam Tisefta is Rabbi Nehemia. Yeah. I would have understood that he's arguing. I, I, I took the charts over here. Uh, He's, he's saying that Rabbi Yehuda got it wrong. We were both by Rabbi Akiva. Rabbi Yehuda's quoting Rabbi Akiva. And I've heard from Rabbi Akiva differently. But the Bach adds in these words that he's actually asking on Rabbi Akiva and he's arguing on Rabbi Akiva, which is his teacher, which is surprising. It says, Ma ro, ro, ro Rabbi Akiva. That's his, uh, his, the, the words that get added in. L'chalik, between these chapters. El Barishan. Now, he repeats the whole thing just for one point. All he wants to do is he wants to say that Ms. Mashali and Mashabas is not talking about the future. Mm. He says, there's too big of a difference. Everything is talking about the past that Hashem created. And all of a sudden, seventh day is the future world. So he says, Sunday is Hashem acquired and he gave over the world to man. The Shani on Sunday? Oh, I'm sorry. Sunday. Was not, but man was buried on, on Friday. Oh. Teva Liyoshviva, to those that will inhabit it, I guess. Yeah. The Hikna Teva Liyoshviva, to those that dwell in it. Yeah. Yeah. When were all the insects created together with the animals? Okay. Because they, the insects ruled the world. <laughs> we're just, uh, we're just guests of it. <laughs> okay. So, um, so yeah, the smaller they are. Okay. So, Vesheni, Shechilik Mais of Amalach On Monday, he divided the world and he rules over them, as we said, he, in the, from the upper world, right? We add in those words, the Bach has them in again. Vesheni, Shechilik Mais of On Tuesday, he revealed the dry land. 
Behechen Teva Laadasi, and he prepares that uh, the continents. Berevi, I'm sure someone goes through this and talks about like uh, Pangea, Pangea, and all of the how this worked. Um, Berevi Shabarachama Ulavana Vasli Parame of Deim, and the on the uh, on Wednesday, he created the sun and the moon, and he's going to take uh, revenge from those that worship them. He created the birds and the fish, um, yeah, the uh, aviary and uh, the aquariums that we praise Hashem because of that. He finished his work and he rules over them. And Bashvi Al Shem Shavas. That's the main point. Yeah, I don't know why we had to go through the repetition of this. All he wanted to tell me was, Bashvi al Shem Shashavas. On the seventh day, he rested. That's more uh, uh, symmetrical with, uh, with the others. Bikamiflagi Bidrav Katina. Bidrav Katina. And this actually argues on what Rav Katina said. The Amar of Katina, Shita al Fishnin Havi Alma Vachad Kharov. Rav Katina says that the world is going to be 6,000 years. And one year will be destroyed. 1,000 years will be destruction. And that 1,000 years, it's just going to be Hashem alone. Is that the model? No, I think it means in the future. It'll be just Hashem alone. 1,000 years, yeah. Yeah. Um, whenever you ask questions on something like this, they always quote to you the Rambam in the Marnavuchim that says that you don't have to take the Gemara like this like uh, as a fact. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm not sure. I don't know, Rav Katina. However, Abaya, Abaya Amar, Trecharov, Abaya says it's going to be 2,000 years of, of destruction. Shinemar Yechayenu Miyamayim will make me live from two days. I guess it means, we'll, maybe it means after that we come back. I'm not sure. Okay. Um, yeah, I don't have any commentary, anything to explain with this. Maybe, I think uh, we believe, or we were told that 6,000 years is, um, a year 6,000, we need, we have to have Mashiach, right? That's what we were told. It's probably based on, a Gemara, on this Gemara. Mm -hmm. We say Netzach Yisrael Shaka the Jewish people are forever. Right. How does that fit with the world being destroyed? Yeah, I think the way Chassidus would explain this is that it will be total bittel. Hmm. Um, that means that the light of Hashem will be so strong, everything else will pale. So now we see things as independent, and um, we think, oh wow, it's not, it's not interesting. It's not interesting. It's, not interesting. it's going to be no. There's nothing but Hashem. Everything is. Uh, that's the way it's. Uh, Charuv doesn't have to mean that there's like um, uh, Armageddon. <laughs> it, it could mean that um, it just won't have value because everything will be Hashem. Hashem will be the real value. Amen, yeah. amen. I'm sorry? Yeah, that's it's a positive. Okay, but Musveh the Shabbos, Maho Yoimrim, what do they say on Musaf and Shabbos? Amar Rav Anan Barava, and it could be Rav Chanan Barava, Amar Rav, that's a very significant name, because I believe that's Rav's son-in-law. Rav Chanan Barava, is, um, he says in the name of Rav, what are we going to say? What, are we, no, what did we say? Yeah. The hair, Daniel. Yitzhi says the son-in-law says the name of the father-in-law. Then he wrote a book with his mother-in-law. So, no, 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 no. so okay. <laughs> so what do they say on Shabbos Musaf? What's the song that the Levim sing? Look at this. Hazivlach. They sing Hazivlach. Now, Hazivlach is an acronym for the Parshas Hazino. So the He stands for Hazino Hashemayim, right? Levi, yeah, help us out. The Zion is Zachar, Zachar Yimai Salem, right? which may be actually Shani, because the Gemara is going to say that the way we divide it up on Shabbos is the way we divide it up for Elias as well. Then the next one is Yarkiveo al Bamasayaretz. The Vav is Vayar Hashem Vayinatz. We're going through the Rashi Tevot. The Lamed is 
machlekes. Um, it's either lu um, lu leikas oyev, or it's lu chachmu yaskilu zayis. You see in Taisvus over there, he quotes Masech the Seifrim. No, actually, um, Masech the Seifrim says it's the vav was by Yishman Yeshurun. And then the Lamed is Lu Chachma Yaskil Azais. Okay, we're up to the Chaf. And the Chaf is Ki Yadin, Ki, ki Yadin Hashem Amai. Okay. Um, and he also, Tais was also quotes Rabbi Nechanano. So, what the Rashi Tevis stand for is different uh, ways of dividing up the portion of Hazinu. And that would be the song that would be sung on Musaf and Shabbos. The way it's divided for Shabbos in the base of Migdash, what the Leviyam are going to sing. So that's um, that's also how it's divided in Shul when we read it. Yeah. What would they say Shabbos Mincha? That was Musaf on Shabbos. Yeah, they would sing Parshazino when they're bringing the sacrifice, while they're pouring the wine at the sacrifice. No, so we're going to say now exactly, were they saying all six, or were they saying just one of them? We'll say in a moment. Okay. On Mincha Shabbos, Amr Rabbi Yechanan, Oz Yashir, Umicha Meicha Oz Yashir. There's two Oz Yashirs in the Torah. One is Oz Yashir, Meishah of Israel, and then there's another one is Oz Yashir, Israel, Alei Be'er, Enola. Which is the, the, the song of the Miriam's well. Now the Gemara is the question. Where's the question? Hanikulich bechad Shabbat Amri lehu idil makol Shabbat veShabbat Amri chad. How was this done? Was this done one portion every Shabbos, or did they do the whole thing every Shabbos? Hmm. You know, there's two ways of um, of reading the Torah. The way, the way we do it is. Pretty much everyone does it like this, is that we finish the Torah every year. But there was a tradition that it would take three years. Yeah, I forget who the traveler was. He went to Egypt. Was there a Rabbi Pesachia or something that was a traveler? Of Regensburg or something that traveled around. He was an early traveler. And he went to Egypt. It was like probably, no, I think it was um, Benjamin of Tadula or something. He traveled to Egypt. It was about a year 900 or 1,000 or something. And there were two shoals there. So one of them finished the Torah every year and one finished every three years. Yeah, how did they do simplest Torah? It must have been huge. Simplest Torah every three years. So <laughs> They didn't have, did we have simplest Torah back then? Yeah, yeah it's, it's, more, like it's probably more recent. Yeah. Actually, yeah. So, what do you? How could it mean the kriya is the same? So one second. The the three year cycle. <laughs> the three year cycle was Parshas Bracious was divided into three. So in three weeks, we finished Parshas Bracious. Is that how it worked? Three weeks, Parshas Bracious. So the question is, what is the Kriya? Oh, oh, so the Yom and Taivim Kriyas were always Yom and Taivim. Okay, that I, that I can accept. Oh. 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 Uh huh. Because, um, yeah, I had a relative that went to a, a conservative uh, show. So one time we were sitting together. So she says, I have to prepare the Kriya. <laughs> she was reading that week. So um, my wife says, Oh, Ailey can help you. But uh, <laughs> anyway. Um, they read the Torah, um, the, the Parsha of the week, but they divided every portion into three, uh, into three. So it took them three years to finish it, but it was there was no wasn't in order. They did they did the first third of the Torah this year, the middle third next year, and so that's not what you're saying, is that or is that the, okay? Whatever the case is, 
So the Gemara's question over here is, do you do all Hazino at one Shabbos, or does it take six weeks to do Hazino? Because you just told me how to divide it up. So the Gemara says, Tashma, the Tanya, I'm Rabbi Rabbi says, until the first one, yeah, the first one means Musaf, until the first one finishes one cycle, the second one, that's referring to Mincha, has finished two cycles. What that means is that Hazina was divided into six. Hazivlach, Hazivlach is six, um, uh, six sections. So Mincha was Az Yashir, Micha, Micha, and Az Yashir. That's three sections. So the first one did one cycle. Mincha has already done two cycles, mm-hmm. which means Shema Mina, Kol Shabbat Veshabbat, Amri Chad, Shema Mina. That means that every week they did one section. It wasn't a long song. It was a short song. It was about six psukim or eight psukim. Mm-hmm. And that was the whole, uh, the whole song. Amar Av Yehuda Bar Idi, Amar Av Yechanan. Rabbi Yehuda Baridi says in the name of Rabbi Yechanan, Eser Masayis Nasushchina. What you just said, is that referring to the laming or Stam? It's referring to the song that was done while the, while the wine was being poured on the altar. They were, the Levium would stand on the side and they would, they would sing. What would they sing? So, yeah, but after they submit this, then we don't really have any any uh, any commemoration of that. Okay. What about the uh, not in Musaf at least, and not in Mincha. Say during uh, in Shachris, it that... would just be the morning section. Yeah, it's interesting that we don't commemorate this by by uh, by Musaf and Mincha. Unless the Sfardim have some. Okay, uh, Rabbi Yechonah would be in Eretz Yisrael, and Rabbi Yehuda Baravidi. I'm not really sure. Here. Here's Rabbi Yechanan. This one is right there. So he says like this: Eser Masayis Nasa Shchina. The Shchina traveled ten travelings. Mikroy, and we know this from Sukkim. Who connect and Galsa Sanhedrin, corresponding to the Shchina traveling. The Sanhedrin also went into exile. Migamara, and that we have from a tradition. What is that? The ten travels that the Shechina traveled. Remember the Pasuk said that we're going to quote it soon. And I will meet with you uh, from above the lid on the Aaron. So the Shechina was originally on the lid of the Aaron. Kapiris means lid. And then it went to the Kruv. Rashi explains the Kruv means the Kruvim in the, in the base of Migdash that Shleiman Melech made that were 10 Amas tall. There were Kruvim that were on the lid, mm-hmm. small Kruvim, mm-hmm. fi- figurines. Um, but then there were these massive Kruvim that Shleiman Melech made. The wingspan went from wall to wall. There were the, uh, and um, those were 10 Amas. So it went to, they were in the, in the, in the Kedush HaKadosh and probably stretched out over the Aran. So the Aran would be a small, and then there would be these two Kruvim that were there. Statues, yeah, that would not, that, uh, you, you mentioned this. I think that that's why when they dis- when the basic English was destroyed, the Aaron wasn't there, and nevertheless, the enemies were able to see that the Kruvim were facing each other. Which Kruvim could they be? The Aaron was missing, it was Shlema Melch's Kruvim, right? Oh, wow. So it goes on to the Kruv. Now we have a, 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 a a version of the text that says Mikruv le Kruv. <laughs> we have the it goes from Kruv to Kruv, but actually the the commentaries here take that out. Mikruv le Miftan is Miftan the the front of the of the door. It's like the doorstep. I think that's what it is. The threshold that makes sense. Mi Miftan le Chatzer. Then from the Miftan it goes to the Chatzer. Another version the Gra has it went to the roof and then from the roof to the Chatzer. Chatzer Rashi tells us is the area in between the Ulam and the Mizbeach. Ulam is the entrance way to the Heichal, and the Mizbeach was right outside there. So there would be, a, right, you walk down the steps, it would be like a few steps, and it was right there. So Mechatzel and Mizbeach, then it went onto the Mizbeach, Mizbeach Lagag, then it went onto the roof, and Migag Lachayma, then it went onto the wall. 
the Mechaima Le'ir, then it went to the city, Umeir Lahar, then it went to the mountain. Har, I think it says, is Har Azesim. And Mehar Lamidbar, then it went to the desert. Umi Midbar also, Yashub Mechaima, then it went back to its place. Now, Shinemar, as it says, Eilach Hashub El Mechaimi, I will go and I return to my place. So we're going to look at Sukkim over here that will correspond to these 10 stops, 10 to these 10. Uh, yeah, what's really going on is that the Shekhinah was giving us another chance. It would like step out and then look back and see, are we deserving? And then we'd step out a little further and see if we're deserving. And okay. Mikapayas the Kruv, Mikruv, the Kruv, Mikruv, the Miftan. I will meet you there and I will speak to you from on top of the lid. Talking to Maishra Rabbeinu, right? Uksiv, and it's also written, He rode on the Kruv and he floated, he, he flew. Uksiv, the honor of the God of Israel went up from the Kruv and it went to the threshold. Then it went to the courtyard. And the house of Hashem was filled with a cloud, and the courtyard was filled with the shine of, of Hashem. This is from Micheskel, I think. It went to the uh, to the Mizbeach. He sees Hashem on the Mizbeach. Mizbeach legag, where it goes to the roof. It's better to sit on the roof. The pasuk says, base cover. It's better to go to the roof, to the corner of the roof. Than to live with a uh, quarrelsome wife. Yeah, usually they call this a doghouse, but uh, anyway, whatever. Megag lechayma. Then it goes to the to the wall. The ksev ina Hashem nitzav al chaymas anach. Hashem is standing on the wall. Anach is a uh, a plumb line. You know, like how they would make something straight. What's it called? The, that that thing that is a tool. No, but what's the the a level? A level, like a level. Right. As the bubble, right? Um, it goes from the wall to the city. The voice of Hashem to the city it calls out. Meir Lahar went to the mountain. The this is in Micha. It went from the city and it went to the mountain that was east of the city. Midbar. Then it went to the desert. The Midbar. And I think that Pasuk also says, me Aishas Medanim Vikast, and from a quarrelsome wife in anger. So that's what I was referring to, this again in Mishlei, referring to the Shechina. It says, it's better for me to go out to the desert than to live with, uh, with, uh, with contentious, contentious women. I mean, Midbar also, Yashva bin Kaim, and then from the desert, it goes back to its place. The Ksiv, Eila Chashuv El Mekaimi, I'll go and I'll return to my place. And... Adasher Yeshmu, the Pasuk uh, concludes, which we don't have in our text, but Rashi had it, and which means until the people will recognize that they're guilty, hmm. and then they'll repent. So let me just, uh, he steps out to see if people recognize. I'm guilty, I repent. Yeah. So um, one of the times I was observing, I would go to observe teachers to see what they would. Really? So one teacher, he walks into the room and the classroom wasn't quiet. So he walks back out, wait till like a few seconds. He opens the door again and he walks in. It wasn't good, but he walks out again until everyone gets the hint and everyone's sitting nicely. Then he would walk in and everyone would stand up and it's okay, no, then he would go to his place. So he'd give them like a few shots, you know, <laughs> I'm going to try again, I'm going to try again. Okay. So I, um, a Shuvel Makaimi, yeah, it, it says the ear, the, the, the ground of Yerushalayim is the holiest ground in the city, in the ear of Tzvas is the holiest ear. Oh. That's what they would say. Rabbi, I think you told us the story about the teacher where every, someone stole something and then was prepared, he had actually kept his eyes closed. Was yeah, I don't remember that. that. Yeah, she said that story. I don't when, remember that. You didn't so, remember that either. either. Yeah. Who told you? I remember. Oh. Sorry. Anyway, someone stole something in the classroom, right. and then the, the teacher says, "Put your hand in the pocket." Uh, what? Put your hand. Something. We return it. All right. And then uh, I won't. I don't remember. Everybody exactly. close your eyes. They wouldn't know who it was. Who, who was the returned? Put in the middle, and then this man. Then the teacher saw was there. 
and then the kid who had stolen it afterwards had said to the teacher, why didn't you, uh, you know, uh, say anything to me? Yep, he says, my eyes were closed also. Oh, so that's this, beautiful. This reminds me uh-huh. that maybe Hashem stepped out so that he wouldn't Whoa. see the Jews who, who had to say they Very had nice. to do tshuva and come back Very after nice. everyone is clear. Of Very nice. Dr. Stein uh, is saying that what's really happening here is that um, even example, someone stole something in the class, the teacher says everyone should put their head down and close their eyes, whatever, and the, the boy that stole will put it back on the desk. So the boy asked afterwards the teacher, how come you didn't tell me anything for what I did? He said, no, my eyes were closed also. So what he's saying is that the reason why Hashem is stepping out is because he shouldn't see who's the guilty one. Let them repent with him. Oh, it's very nice, very nice. The rest of the day off, yeah. I'm Rabbi Yechanan. It's a very nice chat. I'm Rabbi Yechanan. Rabbi Yechanan says, Shisha Chadashim Nesak Bashkin Al Yisrael Bamidbar Shem Yachsur Bechuva. Six months. The Shechina waited in the desert. Maybe the Jewish people repent. Kivan Shlech Hazram Atipa Chatzman. He said, Let them burst. What's the correct um, version here? Let them despair and be lost. Yeah. Tibach Nafshan. The eyes of the wicked will um, uh, fail. Yeah, they'll have no um, hope. Is that what it means? Will be lost. And their hope from, uh, how does it say, Pach Nefesh? Uh, and your hope shall be drooping of the soul. Drooping? Okay. Yeah, so drooping. Okay, now that was the Shechina, the 10 places that the Shechina traveled to. Connect them, Gulsa Sanhedrin. The Sanhedrin also went into exile. Originally, it left because there were too many murders and they didn't want to, they weren't able to deal with all the murders. So they didn't want to be in the place where they sort of like closed the court. They shouldn't have to uh, bring everyone to, to judgment. So they left their original place. And this is Migamar, this is a tradition. Milishka Sagazis, that's the room of hewn, hewn stones in the base of Migdash where the Sanhedrin would sit. They went to Chanus. That was an area on the Harabayas where they it was called Chanuyas. They had Chanuyas there, stores. Michanus li Yerushalayim, then they went to Yerushalayim. Yerushalayim li Yavna, then they went to Yavna. Yavna is famous. That was probably the first place that was uh, Rabbi Yechon ben Zakkai was probably there. Mi Yavna li Usha. Then they went to Usha. Usha would be in the days of Rabbi Gamliel, um, Rabbi Gamliel Hazakin. Then they went back to Yavna. And that would be in the days of Rabbi Shimon Ben Gamliel the first. Actually, it's not really the first, but the first big one. Um, then there was Miyavna Le Usha. Then they went back to Usha. And this is actually going to be in the days of Rabbi Shimon Ben Gamliel. Um, who would be the father of Rebbe. Um, then they went to Shafram. Shafram This is where Rebbe was. They went to Tzipayri. And then, they went, and then it went to Tveria. Beisharim, Tzipayri, and Tveria was all in the days of Rebbe. Tveria, Mukamikulan. That was the lowest of, of them all. Um, I don't know what that, I'm not sure what that means. Tveria, it says, was in the days of Antoninus. Who, 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 who's Antoninus in English? Anthony. Yeah. It sounds like Anthony. Um, what year was Mark Anthony? What year was that? Julius Caesar. 1432. No, so that no, was 33. Right? 1490. Wasn't Julius Caesar 30? Year 33. But was it Mark Anthony and Julius Caesar in the same movie? Mark I don't Anthony know. I didn't, I, was, I didn't see Caesar's, the movie. Uh, right hand man. <laughs> I'm sorry? was not Mark Anthony. Yeah, uh, but I think it, it, like, it, uh, the problem with Antoninus is that um, the name, the word Antonius, uh, uh, was every emperor had the name, and it's. I think it's hard to. <laughs> Tony. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Tony okay. <laughs> okay. Shinamar Vishiflas me erits to Dabri. 
the lowest from the from of the earth to Dabri, does that mean you should you you spoke? If this is the only continuous, it's yes, eighty six to one sixty one. Yeah, so that would be interesting because that's approximately the days of Rebbe. Right. Yeah, and uh, Antonius Pius was a Roman emperor. Oh, he was one of the five good emperors from Nerva until Ant Antonin. Is that what Tiberius is named after? Yeah, Tiberius is named after. Um, was that the emperor, Tiberius? Was that yeah, yeah, name? yeah. Okay. Uh, that could be could be that's where he got the name okay what hadrian's niece oh yeah that's right yeah and then hadrian adopted him as yep. his son and successor before he died yep. so oh, that's uh -huh. hadrian um was a good emperor for rome but he was very bad for the jews we we, we consider him a bad emperor yeah, everyone, we have a different version of history. <laughs> Not surprised. So, oh, that's the river there. Yeah, yeah I, I was told that Esther is not in Persian history. We don't have an Esther there. But there is a queen that was a very bad queen that um, created, caused a civil war, got rid of a prime minister, and like, like a very, in Persian history. So that would be Esther for them. And for us, that was like the... Good. Yeah. <laughs> we have our own version. Okay. Yeah, in the Megillah. No, no, no. In Persian history? Uh -huh. So, okay, Rabbi Lazar Reimer, Sheish Golis. Rabbi Lazar says that there were actually six exiles. Shnemar ki asoch yoshve marim kirya neskava yashpilena. Yashpilena ad eretz yagiena ad afar. So, those are instead of dividing it into 10, he divides it into six. Um, get up from the dirt and um, return. Okay. Yeah, Rashi goes through what each one of those words is referring to. Hasach is chada, yashpilena is two. Ad Eretz is three. Arba, I'm saying Ah, there it says four. Yeah, again, it's five. Okay, you go through that pasuk and it divides it up into instead of ten, it's six. Yeah, no, this the Rabbi Yechanan would be Rabbi Yechanan ben Nafcha, who is the the uh, main teacher of the Amiraim actually in Tiberia. So all of this, the Tiberia is the is the conclusion is really is Rabbi Yechanan's. Uh, yeah, I'm Rabbi Shua ben Karcha. Remember who Rabbi Shua ben Karcha is? Son of Rabbi Akiva. Oh, wow. It's called Karcha. <laughs> he's, um, he's called, um, Rabbi Akiva is called Karcha because he was bald. So, yeah. So Rabbi Shua ben Karcha says, <laughs> They called him Baldi, yeah. Um, uh, who was it? Ben Azai or Ben Zayma said, Everyone in front of me is like a. Everyone here is like the the skin of a garlic, except for except for the this baldy. He's the only one that's like that can win me in uh, in learning. So, yeah, according to one version, Shmuel called Rabbi Yehuda, you know, buck teeth. So they they used um, or sharp one depends how you want to. So Rabbi Yechon and Zakeh also instituted Shafilu Reish Bezdin Bechol Mokin, even if the head of the Bezdin isn't there, Shlei Yuedim Holchem El Makam Avad, that the, the witnesses don't have to run to fi find out on the GPS where the head of the Bezdin is. They can just go to the yeshiva and they can testify over there in the Beis Avad. Beis Avad is the, I know the problem is, is that there was a Mishnah before that said that the Av Bezdin would announce Mekudosh and then everyone else would say, Makudish, Makudish. So you would think that you need to have the Avdaz. And he says, No, 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 it's fine. You would go to the Makam Avad and you would, it would be over there. You don't have to uh, follow and make it easier on the Adem. Ahi, it's a Dezamnuel Ladina Kameda Amemar Benar Doi. A woman was summoned to court in front of Amemar. Ozal Amemar Lemachuza, 
Amemar happened to go to Mephusa Balayosu Basri, but she didn't follow him. Because of Psicha Lave, he put her in Cherim. Amalei Ravashi La Amemar, Ravashi says, Tamemar, Vanan Tanana feel very special in You have a Mishnah that says she doesn't have to follow the Av Bezdin, she just has to go to the court. Just to the place of the assembly. That was just for testimony regarding the new month. We don't want to make it hard on them in the future. But over here, the borrower is a slave to the lender. And she has to defend herself in, in court. So she has to find me. And he went to another place. She has to follow him. Yeah, that's not that interesting. Taner Abanan. Stood in a bray say. It's a, it's a, it's a, a Meimar is the judge. Yeah, remember he was a judge in Nardai. Um, yeah, we had that in a mafket that he was in Nardai, and um, he went on a trip to Mechuza. And the lady that was summoned to court didn't uh, follow him to Mechuzah, so she gets put in cherem for not coming to court. Ravashi says, uh, why, what's the problem? You went out, she maybe went to the court in Ardai. So it doesn't matter, she's supposed to find me. Isn't it the word we remember was? Oh, it's, I, it doesn't tell me that that's the case. That's interesting. Um, and then it would be that there was a borrower, that she was the borrower. Um, yeah, I didn't see it like that. It could be that's the pshat, but I, I understood that she's just uh, indebted, uh, like uh, responsible to find uh, Amema. The Kayanim are not supposed to go up with their shoes when they go up to Duchen. Remember the, the reason for this? Yeah, so they can see their cool socks. Yeah, so they can show off their Ar Argyle socks. Okay. No. Um, <laughs> um, it was because the shoes may be distracting, right, to the people. Oh, really? I think so. I think the shoes may be distracting. So there goes those sling socks. It says without sandals either. With, they go without sandals. Without. Yeah. The, is there? Does he say a reason for that? So, however, whatever the case is, there's nine takanas. We're getting a lot of numbers on this stuff. There's nine takanas of Rabbi Yechon Menzakai. Shista Hyperka. Six of them were in our chapter. One was in the first chapter. And then we'll go through the other ones. Let me just tell you the six. Number one was that you blow in front of the, co the court, even after, even not in Yerushalayim, after the Beis HaMikdash was destroyed. Number two was that the Lulav is seven days uh, outside the Beis HaMikdash in commemoration of the Beis HaMikdash. Yom uh, Hanef, the, the, the 16th of, of Nisan, was, was also to eat the new grain. Um, you can receive the testimony the entire day. We have no concern that they may come after Mincha, and we've already brought the sacrifice and we messed it up because there's no sacrifice. So you, the witnesses come all day. Number five is that what we just learned in this Mishnah, that their witnesses do not need to go to the Avdez, and they just go to the assembly. And number six is that the Kayanim don't wear shoes when they dochen. Um, one of them from the first parak was that you violate the Shabbos for two months, mm -hmm. Nisan and Tishrei, because it, that's important for the holidays. The witnesses that would come only for those two months, they don't violate for the other ones. Now, Vidach, what are the other three? I'm sorry, that was already seven, right? Six plus one is seven. Now there's another two. Vidach, Titania, Gershin, Eskayab, Ismanazet, Tzarech, Shiyafrish, Reva, Lekinai. Someone that converts, has to designate a raiva, which is a quarter of a, of a, of a shekel, which is a half a dinar, um, for the bird that he's going to bring when the Mashiach, uh, Mashiach comes, the Beis Hamikdash. Uh, when a person converts in the time of the Beis Hamikdash, he has to bring a sacrifice. What about now we converted? So, well, he should designate a coin and be ready. So, well, the source of the sacrifice is the, is the, is comes from how how do we convert? We learn it from what the Jews did in the desert. There was mila and tefila and a carbon. We brought a carbon before the um, before by Yalu Oilis by Yisbech Yeah, that uh, 
that we brought a carbon before we received the Torah. That was like the mass conversion of the Jewish people. So every individual goes through that process as well. Yeah, there's a famous ragged shaver on this. I'm sorry? Oh, uh, uh -huh. no, it could be there was another one. The Levium brought the uh, Karbanas, the Bechayrim back then. Yeah. Okay, so Amar Rab Shimon ben Alazah kvar nimna alav Rab Yechanan u bitlam pnei atakala, that Rab Yechanan, this is referring to Rab Yechanan ben Zaka, I nullified this because it could lead to a, uh, a problem. People are going to leave money around that's consecrated. That's not a good idea. So they, they stopped that. The Idach, what's going to be the last one? Plukta the Rav Papa, Rav Nachman, Bar Yitzchak. Last one is a Machlaikas. Yeah, there has to be a Machlaikas. So we have one Machlaikas. Okay. Rav Papa Amar, Kerem Ravai, that it's the fourth year of a vineyard. We're going to see in a moment. Rav Nachman Yitzchak, Malash and Shel Zaharis, it's referring to the scarlet thread um, that was in Anyam Kippur. Rav Papa, Amar Karim Ravai, Rav Papa says that it's talking about the fourth year of a vineyard, that the, those fruits need to go to Yerushalayim, but you're allowed to redeem them. Karim Ravai, Yerushalayim, Mahalach Yoyim L'chol Tzad, Vizui Tchuma. Here's the one day's walk outside Yerushalayim. Elat, it's supposed to be Minat, Minha Darim. Elat is to the south. Is that possible? Elat is a day's walk to Yerushalayim? It's further field than trip, that. Field trip. How, field how trip. many, how many has, hours uh, by car? Right here. It's six hours by car? Okay. Ooh. Then maybe it was a different a lot. Uh, Akravas min ha tzafin. Akravas is from the north. Lud min ha mairav. That sounds like it could be. Lud was, um, was from the south, from the, I'm sorry, it's in the west. The yardin min ha in the Jordan is to the east. And the idea over here was that you were not allowed to redeem those fruits if you were in a day's journey from Yerushalayim because we wanted to have nice fruits in Yerushalayim. People would come, it should look really nice. If everyone's just going to bring money, but no one's going to have produce, that's what the marketplace is going to look like. So they said that no redemption from those areas. You have to bring the actual fruits, which would be grapes. Tanya Kamra by Hale Rabelezer, Bemizrach Lud, Bitsad Kvar Tevi. Rabbi Eliezer happened to have fruits. Rabelezer was wealthy. He had his father's fields, Rabelezer Ben Horkinus. Yeah, but I, I switched it to Minadarim because on the side, of, I have another version of the, to the south, which I thought brothers. that would fit better, but maybe it doesn't help anyway. Did you know brothers? He did have brothers, but he inherited equally together with them. At least that's what he requested. Remember that, Kamara? Yeah. And then, um, so he had us in the area of Kvar Tevi, which is east of Lud. That means it's closer to Yerushalayim than Lud. So he definitely has to bring it. And Bikush Rebbe Lazar he wanted to make it hefker to the poor that they could bring to Yerushalayim. Amrulay Talmidov, the students told him, Rebbe Kvar Nimna Chavera Chalav Yetiru, your friends already said that you don't have to do this. Why? Because the basic English is destroyed. It's not necessary to make Yerushalayim beautiful. Man Chaverach, who are the friends? Rabbi Yechonim and Zaka. I'm going to have a problem with this in a minute because Rabbi Yechonim and Zaka is not his friend. It's his teacher. Rabbi Nachman B'Yitzchak Amalashon Shel Zahiris. Rabbi Nachman B'Yitzchak says that it was the scarlet uh, thread. The Tanya was taught in the Brisa. That's the scarlet letter. Uh, it's the same thing. A thread on the entranceway outside, Hilbin. If it turned white, everyone was happy. It means that they were sin, their sins were Loi Hilbin. If it didn't turn white, they were all depressed. They said, put it inside. We don't want people to feel bad. But they would still somehow look inside and they would figure it out. They had to get the information because it's good to know, right? Hilbin. They, uh, if it turned white, they were happy. They would be depressed. They switched the, the way they did this. They would put half on the rock and half they would push off the cliff. And so they wouldn't be able to see it. So what, what is this with, uh, what was the decree of Rabbi Yechim and Zakai? Um, I guess that was the decree that they didn't put it on the altar. Now, this would be Rabbi Yechim and Zakai during the base of Migdash. What's the reason that Rav Nachman Yitzchak didn't say like Rav Papa? 
Uh, he says like this, if you want to say that it's Rabbi Yechim ben Zakkai that made the decree that you don't have to bring those fruits to Yerushalayim, is he a friend? Rabbi, that's his main teacher. What is the other opinion? What does Rav Papa say? You won't tell your teacher, your teacher said, you would say your friend said, if it's the students talking. The students tell their teacher that his teacher, they call him your friend. That's the way they, they, they view it. Rav Papa, my time, why doesn't Rav Papa say like Nachum by Yitzchak that it was the, the scarlet um, thread? Amalach. If you think it's Rabbi Yechim Zaka, it's impossible. You made Rabbi Yechim Zaka and you have a lashon shel zahiris. Rabbi Yechim Zaka was after the base of Migdash. He didn't have the thread. But Tanya, listen to the brisa. Kol shenai tzur shel Rabbi Yechim Zaka mei avesim shana. He lived for 120 years. Mem shana sek beparkamati. First, he was a businessman for 40 years. Yeah, this is the way to do it. You first, you make your money, yeah. and then you can sit and learn. So. <laughs> Mem shana, yeah, just usually it, it's hard to quit. Mem shana uh, lamad, then 40 years he learned. Mem shana limit, in 40 years he taught. Vitani, mem shana kaidim shnecha rabbayas le'elashen shal zaris malbin. There were 40 years before the destruction of the temple that it wouldn't turn white. Elamadim, it would be red. Vitani, and it was taught. Mishachar of abayas, hiskin rabbi yechem When the base of English was destroyed, rabbi yechem and Benzakai instituted other things regarding the lulav. So how could it be that when Rabbi Yechon Zakkai starts to teach, with, you're telling me that that was in the time of the Beis HaMikdash, it's impossible. That's, he's starting to teach after the Beis HaMikdash is destroyed. The Idach, what does the other opinion hold? It was during the 40 years that he was learning. He was learning by his teacher. The Amar Milsa de Staber Taima. He said something that was nice, that was logical. And his teacher said in his name that he instituted. This is a very important Gemara for me. Um, what happened here? Rabbi Yechim Zak is a student. He made a comment. His teacher said, oh, that's so nice. And they, they instituted, and they said that it was their student that instituted it. Rabbi Yechim Zaka becomes a teacher. And that's why we have him always praising his students. That's like the big uh, emphasis. Mm. Because his teachers did it for him. His teachers acknowledged that he made a comment as a student. And that's it. Okay. Uh, I guess we should stop over here. All right. Hold on, yes, Page behind. Okay. Thank you, Ravi Hey, thank you very much.